Hey gang, Uncle Todd here with Sunny as always. And in this episode of Agatha, we now get Lillian's trial. Although we don't know that at the beginning. Uh, Agatha and Billy show up at a castle. Hmm. And when they enter, uh, Agatha becomes the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz. And Billy becomes Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty. And there is a uh, little table with sections for cards and a tarot deck. So, Billy tries to read the cards correctly and there are swords on the ceiling and they start dropping one by one as he plays each card. Then uh, we cut to Jen and Lillian who are in a tunnel. Uh, they've apparently fallen there from the mire. And uh, it's here that we learn that Lillian doesn't view her life in a linear fashion. For her, time is very jumbled. She pops in and out of different time frames for herself. So sometimes she knows what's going on and sometimes she doesn't. And this explains all the weird things she's been saying to everyone throughout the rest of the series as she is giving them glimpses of what she's seen in the future. Such as uh, telling Alice not to try to save Agatha, which then refers back to when Alice tried to save Agatha from her mother's ghost and got, and got her life force absorbed by Agatha. So this is what's going to be happening throughout all this. Now, anyone who says, oh, it's like a Tarantino thing where uh, we, we tell the story out of order. No. I think it's more like Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five where uh, the character is just able to bounce around within their own timeline of their life. Uh, of course, that's how I, I look at it. Uh, and uh, then they appear in the castle with Agatha and Billy. Uh, Lillian is Gwenda the Good Witch. Glinda. Glinda the Good Witch from Wizard of Oz. And Jen appears to be the old hag disguise that the evil queen from Snow White uh, affected when she gave her the poisoned apple. And uh, Lillian believes that uh, she now has to be the one to uh, play the cards. And she's playing them for Billy. But as she reads and lays the cards down, the knives fall. Uh, it's also here where everyone learns that Aunt Lilith is the one who put the sigil on Billy. And when asked why, she uh, had seen what was in the future and put the sigil on him so that he would have time to adjust to what happen what is what would be happening to him. Uh, she also keeps bouncing back to uh, when she was a child talking with her, I believe it's her aunt or grandmother, about uh, learning her precognitive things. And although she starts out as uh, the little girl that she was, then she immediately morphs into the lady enough to now, and they have conversations where she's trying to figure out what she needs to do. And she keeps having this thing of falling. She was falling. She is falling. She has fallen, you know. And uh, then uh, bounce back to the tunnel where we see that the Salem Seven have uh, entered the tunnel too and are searching for Agatha. We uh, then cut to back to the castle where Lillian realizes Teen is not the one. It is her. 
she is the one that needs to read the card. So she's reading the cards about herself. And as she had started this, the knives are starting to lower towards them. And uh, cuts back to the time when she and Jen fell through the mire into the tunnel originally. And here uh, Lillian explains everything that's going on to Jen that she's seen so far and tells her, but later on I won't remember this. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, she keeps uh, going back to her grandmother and they keep talking. And then she finally realizes what it is she has to do. And so she goes back again to the um, castle, lays out the cards correctly at the last minute, which stops the knives. And they go back up to the top of the uh, roof and the Iron Maiden opens up as their way out just as the seven break through into the room. So Lillian sends everyone through the maze. She gives T er, Billy back the spell book she found in the tunnel and gives some advice to both Jen and Agatha before shutting the Iron Maiden. And uh, I don't think the Salem Seven have looked as scary as they do here. Their faces are all bleh and misshapen and fangs and stuff. And she explains that they don't understand where they are and why they shouldn't have come. At which point, the one card, the tower card, which was reversed, she writes and gravity immediately reverses and everybody falls up to the ceiling and gets impaled. Now Lillian had held on to the table but eventually she lets go and accepts her fate. We then cut back to the young Lillian coming up to her grandmother and is ready to begin her first lesson in deviant nation which is that's why I believe that uh, she's not dead she's merely loose within her own timeline and is just visiting different moments back and forth at least to me uh, really good episode uh, the um, the out of sequence uh, style of this one really interesting keeps you uh, invested in trying to find out what's going on and what's happening very clever I know a lot of people will compare it to uh, Quentin Tarantino but as I said I pref I think it's more closer akin to Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five uh, we only got two episodes left and I believe they're both being showed next Wednesday so Next Wednesday is going to be a long one for me. Uh, two episodes to take notes on and then to uh, review episodes. So, <sighs> but hey, I signed up for this. <laughs> uh, please hit like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.